Today I want to make a video on uh, sharpening your blades, new blades for uh, molding planes. And this will be just basically something that a beginner might need for starting from scratch for a replacement blade of an existing plane um, or a, um, a brand new plane, for a brand new blade for a brand new plane. So, and I'm only going to address blade related issues in this video. So first of all, after you make your plane, you have to eliminate all issues with the wedge and with the bed of the plane. The reason why is because you cannot have uh, movement in the way the blade is placed in the plane. Every time you adjust the shape of the plane iron and put it back in the plane, it needs to go in the same spot. And that also affects the performance of the blade, but for the purposes of shaping the blade, you cannot have it hop around inside the body of the plane. So that's your first thing. Now, your second thing you can do to help yourself is, I mentioned this in another video, I use paste wax. So I have a ice cream stick that I've kept for a long time and on your wedge you're gonna have that little bevel that's gonna guide the chip into the escapement and away from the body of the plane. So I wax that. That's gonna reduce the friction and help anything, any, any uh, chips that you create are going to be more easily removed from the plane. And the same thing you can do to the escapement area of the plane. So this is the bed of the blade for the blade and this is the escapement ramp. So right down here in front of the in front of the blade is the area where the friction is going to build up and it's possible that your chips are going to jam here. So you can put a little bit of paste wax up on this side of the ramp right through here I do it with the with the ice cream stick and that's going to reduce the friction so that as you begin the process of shaping the blade and doing all your testing you're going to start off with as little friction as possible in your plane and uh, keep it that way as you use the plane it's a cheap little um, insurance policy for for uh, getting a little extra performance out of the, the work that you do. So the next thing I do after I rough out the iron is I put magic marker on it and you just color it in. I use black magic marker. I have those handy. That's what I use. So it would look like this at the end of the blade and then what you do is you're going to install it in your plane, set the wedge get it more or less where you need it. You need to make sure that there's enough of the blade extending past the profile so that you don't have any negative spots below the profile otherwise you'd be wasting your time. So it's got to come up far enough. At the same time you have to make sure that um, when you fabricate your, your, uh, your iron that there's enough of the iron behind the top of the wedge like this so that as you sharpen it and it gets shorter you still have enough of the iron behind the wedge to uh, to keep adjusting it because otherwise you'll do what I did on one of my earliest planes and this is too short so I took this from an existing piece of steel but you don't want them to come out like this otherwise you'll have to reduce the size of the wedge which becomes ridiculously small and then you're just making mistakes on top of mistakes so once you calculate the length of your iron and set all that up, you're going to um, darken them with magic marker, put it in the plane, set the wedge in place. Then I take a scribe that's sharpened with a file, get a really good point on it. And then from the front of the plane, you're going to rest the scribe right on the, the contour of the plane and you're going to go against, now there'll be a space in the mouth of the plane between the, uh, the 
the body of the plane and the face where the, you have the magic marker. So you're going to jump over that small little space with your scribe and then you're going to follow the contour and you're going to scribe into that magic marker all the way through the profile. Then you're going to remove it. You're going to remove the blade. Let me put this to the side and get it out of the way. And uh, then with hacksaw, grinder, files, doesn't really matter. You're going to shape the blade and you're going to rough it as closely to the profile of the plane as possible. Now, you can do that with 01 tool steel very easily because before it's hardened, it's very soft. So you could do it with a hacksaw, you could do it with grinders, you could do it with files, it's not a big deal. I set my grinding angle to 25 degrees and I have a machinist's protractor, set it for 45 degrees and then you'll see, so your back, the back of your blade of your iron is your reference. This is zero. So then everything in front of it is going to be 25 degrees. Okay? And what you're going to do is you'll see that, for instance, this was an eighth inch blade. So if you take the profile and you come back 25 degrees, you'll see that, like, let's say, for instance, that setback on the profile is, let's say, 5 sixteenths of an inch. Then your, your visual guideline is going to be that everything behind that cutting face is set back the same distance. So it almost has to be the same shape as the profile, except when it gets to here, because now this part has to itself come back 25 degrees. So it's going to intrude upon the other part of the profile over here. So there's a little bit of a convergence with the two cutting angles, but that's the idea. And you can get this real close before you harden it. Then once you harden it and you clean off and temper it and clean off all the, the crud that comes from the oil and everything, this will be too hard to shape by hand with files. So then you'll have to use your finest grinding stones on a bench grinder or your diamond stones. And what I use, I also have some very old carborundum stones. These are worn out. They're not good for anything that's flat. They're severely worn. So I use these. You get in there any way you have to to shape these contours. And the idea is to um, keep returning it to the plane, setting the wedge, and checking it by eye. And once you get it real close, then you could start your test cuts. Now the idea is that as the plane advances through your, your molding profile, they're going to be very easy to use at the beginning because you're making only the first introductory cut into the profile. As that plane starts to sink deeper and deeper into the profile, all the cuts get heavier. So your tests really involve the final series of cuts where that blade is cutting through the entire profile of the molding. The idea is you want to produce a smooth cut. So in order to do that, you have to set it very finely. The other reason you want it to set, to set it very finely is because it's easier to push because this is a hand operated tool. So even if you could produce a smooth cut by making a heavy cut, it's too difficult to push anyway. So you have multiple reasons why you want to have that blade set as finely as possible. So there's two things that have to happen. You have to be able to set the blade finely because that's your ability with the hammer and the tapping and the wedge and the way you set it to create the fine cut. And then it has to be shaped properly so that you benefit from the, from the finely set blade. You have to do both. If you don't do one without the other, you're really just shooting in the dark. So 
for for roughing out after you harden it. You can use like I do some of the carborundum blades. You could also use some diamond stones. I've done I've done some shaping with these cheap diamond stones where I can get in here and just do some shaping this way. Uh, I could also you could also do some rough shaping with some of these wheels set like on a drill press or in a die grinder or something like that and just do your shaping this way. Uh, I will mention one thing and that's that generally speaking what happens is you wanna you wanna take all the high spots and lower them. Now if you go too aggressively and you create a low spot you can't raise that. That metal is gone forever. So now you have to, in a sense, raise the entire blade and then reduce all the entire blade. So you'll have, let's say, for instance, 5% of the blade will be too low. The only way to correct that is to lower the other 95% of the profile back down to the low spot. So you want to proceed slowly. It's a very, tedi a very tedious process but generally speaking this is what you want to end up with you want to end up with a profile where the cutting the cutting angle on the back is nearly the same profile as the front of it then on the back just like your flat irons for all your metal body planes and all your other stuff you want you want to put this on your finest stone this you could bring to a thousand twelve hundred whatever whatever you're comfortable with and then over here on the other side you're going to use your diamond stones and also your slip stones so for people that don't know what slip stones are let me just show you what I have I keep them in a tub of water they're always wet they're always ready to go they look like this okay so there's a small curve here for for gouges and um, lathe tools and stuff like that, carving chisels and then there's a slightly larger curve on the back here and you can play with the way you hold them and the angles and stuff and get into some of the smaller contours of your plain iron and then also there's different grits so for um, for slip stones I believe I have a uh, a 600, an 800 and then like a 1200 something like that but um, that's really about it as far as shaping the blades. Like I said, it's, it's tedious. It's time consuming, but it's also rewarding. And when you do, when you do the, um, the major shaping at the beginning and you're done with all your test cuts, you pretty much only have to maintain it at that point because most of the work is already done. And... Um, you're only taking away fractions of a thousandth of an inch. So right in here, this is like 200 years of sharpening. You can reduce this by quite a bit before this blade is useless again. And also, because of the spring angle, so what happens is as you sharpen it, this blade reduces this way. And you get more wear out of this blade. If it was shaped like this, you're going to come to a point where you can't sharpen it anymore and uh, you have to throw it away. So that's another thing that the spring angle gives you. You don't need fancy tools. You don't need a fancy grinder. Uh, you just need to know what you're doing and take your time. Once you do it once or twice, you'll see that it's, pre it's pretty much self-explanatory and uh, there isn't much else you can do because of the geometry that's involved. Now I happen to have made this plane as a set, a right and a left. So I'll just show everybody the other plane. If you happen to be making pairs, what you'll see is that this other blade is basically the mirror image. That's what they have to look like. So like I said, there's really almost nothing to interpret because they have to look like this. And then if you put them back to back, 
what you'll also see if they're the same profile is that there's almost no difference between them there really shouldn't be that much in the way of a difference because the bottoms of the planes were cut at the same time they're just paired as a right and a left so the blades should be mirror images of each other so good luck with your plain irons and your shaping and uh, shout out to Tom Baker for bringing it up in one of the videos and uh, I hope this helps some people with their handmade molding planes thanks a lot everybody stay strong